Welcome to today's Bite Size PD. I have Braxton Thornley, Senior Technology Trainer at UEN, here with me today, and we're going to be talking about Scribble. I'm really excited to talk about Scribble and kind of give an overview of some of its features. So generally speaking, Scribble is kind of like a research assistant, I guess you could say. It allows teachers, students to collect resources into what Scribble calls libraries, and then annotate those resources, mark them up as needed. And then it can also assist teachers and students in using those resources to build out an outline for a writing piece or cite those resources according to MLA or APA style, whatever you may be working in. And basically, it's just a place to organize your research, organize your annotations on research, and then take all of that work and turn it into some sort of finished product. Oh, right on. So let me dive into some of the questions that I have then. And my first one would just be, Given what you just said, and with its emphasis on research, what do you think the best practices would be for introducing Scribble to secondary students, especially students who might not be as comfortable using tool technology tools? Absolutely. I think the common practices that apply to all of our classrooms, regardless of what we're implementing, also apply to Scribble. And mostly what I mean by that is it's typically helpful to start small and with some sort of low stakes environment. So my recommendation typically when teachers begin using Scribble is maybe you have a shorter text that you're working with. Perhaps it's a poem, maybe it's a kind of informal blog article or something like that. And I would recommend giving one of those smaller texts to students first to add to Scribble and then start annotating in Scribble. That way they get kind of a small taste of it before you're asking them to do some of these more complex tasks that are going to involve adding multiple sources to a library, annotating multiple sources, connecting those sources, so on and so forth. What are some ways that teachers can use Scribble to scaffold complex texts, um, especially if for differentiating for, you know, all sorts of learners in the class? Absolutely. This is one of the things that really excites me about Scribble. And I'm actually going to share my screen here so that you can see what I'm looking at. Awesome. Um, but what I have open right now is a research article that I was looking at a couple of weeks ago. And you can see that I have the title up here, author, so on and so forth. But the powerful thing that I think can help support our learners is all of these tools that are built into the Scribble toolbar. And before I get into those tools, I want to pause for just a second to make a distinction with Scribble. When you're working with Scribble, there's essentially two sides to Scribble, I guess you could say. One side is Scribble.com. And you can go to Scribble.com and just log in just like you would log in to any other website. Just use your school email address and you should be pretty set there. The other side of Scribble, though, is that you also need a Chrome extension to get okay. this toolbar that will let you mark up whatever text you're working with. And this is a great opportunity to highlight some of the great ed techs that are working in Canyon School District and just say, if you need help getting your students this extension, talk to your educational technology specialist or your digital teaching and learning specialist, and they should right. be able to help you out with that. Awesome. That said, once you have that extension enabled, then what students can do is whenever they go to any website or whenever they open up any document, they can go ahead and click on their extensions button in Google Chrome and then just select Scribble. And this toolbar is going to pop up. And in this toolbar, they have a few options. So first off, they can save the source to their libraries, which is what this is right here. They can highlight text, they can add comments to text, but what becomes really powerful too is right inside of the text, and again, this applies to any website, maybe a PDF that you send to students, they can also have the text read aloud to them, they can translate oh. any portion of the text that they need, and they can get definitions for any words that they need to. So we have a lot of built-in scaffolding tools just right inside of that toolbar. Um, but it goes even further than that because what teachers can also do, and this is something that I would do all the time in my classroom, is if I knew that I had a really complex text that my students were going to be working with, and I knew that some of my students were going to need some additional support with that, 
What I can also do as a teacher is I can go through and mark up that text however I need to. And oh, then nice. I can send students the annotated version of the text. And so maybe students in group A are just receiving the text blank and I haven't added any annotations to it. But then maybe students in group B are receiving the annotated version of the text. And then we're all still working from the same text. We're all still working from the same sentences, paragraphs, so on and so forth. But there are some supports built in for the students in group B, so to speak. And the way that I would do that is just clicking the share button right up here. And you can see that I have a couple of options, but really as a teacher, the most useful one is generally permalink. And once I click on that, I'm going to get this little link from Scribble. And then I can just plop that link wherever I need to. And typically I would just put it in Canvas and students can click on that. And now they're seeing the article itself but they're also going to see all of my annotations that I've made on this article as well. well that's really powerful. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, what, it's um, really exciting. Yeah, um, I can just totally see the applications with this for, you know, any of our struggling readers or, or ML students, you know, newcomers. And my, I do have a question. Can you, can students work on the same document? Can you have like a group of students on one document? Oh, really good kid? question. Yeah, yeah. So when you are, there's a couple of ways to approach this. So if I was the teacher and I had shared an annotated document, in that case, the annotated document kind of becomes static in a way. And what I mean by uh, that is students wouldn't necessarily be able to contribute to that. However, the other option is over on the side here, you can see that I have an option to enable collaborators. And so I can still have students work on the same document, but they would need to be added as collaborators to their own version, if that makes sense. So they wouldn't be able to contribute to my teacher document, but they would be able to all work together and work on their own version of the document. So does the, does the teacher then have a copy of each student's, what they've done and where would that be housed? Really good question. So there's a couple of ways to approach that. For me, the easiest way, generally speaking, was for students to move through the same process that I just highlighted. So maybe I have a group of three students and I say, I want all of you to annotate this document for me. They're going to go into Scribble. They're going to open up their Scribble toolbar. They're going to open up the collaborator section and then type in each other's email addresses and that will add all of them to that document. Then they're going to go through and they're going to make their annotations, whatever I've asked them to do. But generally speaking, once those annotations are done, the easiest way for me as a teacher to check those would be I would ask my students to simply submit their own link that I could then see maybe in Canvas or wherever they're submitting that. And then as the teacher, I can scroll through their document and their annotations are going to appear on the side. And you can see right at the top of this annotation, it says who made this annotation and when the annotation was made. So I made this annotation way back in January and you can see what I've written here. And that applies to any of the annotations that happen inside of the document. So even if a student hasn't written something, maybe they've only highlighted some text, I'm still going to get a little note on the side that says like, Jonathan highlighted this text. And then I can scroll through and see in that group of three students who are working together, who contributed what to the discussion. Nice, nice. Cause I could see, I'm thinking right now, just uh, even using this, we've been talking a lot about mentor texts lately. And so I could see almost where you could go in and, and have a student look for, you know, a type of evidence being used and highlight it and then annotate and say, you know, here's why this evidence is effective right here. And then they can in their journal kind of practice with the mentor the way that that person did, but with their own evidence. I don't know. It seems like it'd be a pretty cool thing to do. Absolutely. I love that idea. And that actually brings up another powerful component inside of Scribble is that it has this tag option and I'll actually open this up. Right now, yeah. I don't have any tags in my article or in my library, but what I could do is as a student, I could go in and I could write in my own tag, whatever it is. So maybe it's a direct quote. I don't know, whatever the teachers want their students to be looking for. And then once they've added that to their library, then when they're highlighting things, they can go ahead and tag it as a direct quote or whatever they need to tag it as. And then the powerful thing 
is that they can come back to the back end of Scribble. So this is scribble.com. And what you can see here is a list of my resources in my library or collection that I'm saving. And then they can search for those tags within the library. And so you can see that I have a couple saved here. And so if I just click on a tag, then what Scribble will do is it will pull up all of the direct line quotes from the articles that I've read that I've tagged with that tag, nice. whatever the case may be. And so if you are working through a lot of mentor texts, which hopefully you are, mm -hmm. what I would recommend is that as a teacher, maybe before you begin a unit or before you dive into those mentor texts, you figure out like maybe a list of five or six things that you're going to have your students look for and mm -hmm. then spell out specifically how you want them to tag those things. Because then at the end of the unit, they're going to be able to really quickly find all of the specific lines and paragraphs where that thing, whatever it is, has happened inside of all of their texts. And that can be a really powerful way for students to develop some of their writing skills. Right, and I, and I think about, I know one of our teachers has their students, they always have a journal nearby because you never know when the inspiration hits, she says, and she, but she says they basically curate favorite passages, lines, quotes, techniques that, and then in their journal, that's what they're doing. But I could totally see this being used for that, where you're curating and it's, and it saves it for you. So that's absolutely, that sounds cool. And, and along those lines in my classroom. So I, I generally taught language arts 11. Sometimes I would teach seniors as well, but I taught language arts 11 quite a bit. And one of the tags that we would always use in Scribble was just golden sentences, which were just sentences that yep. jumped out to students. And then at the end of our unit or our quarter, whatever the case would be, we'd dig through some of those and share some of them and break them down a little bit more. I love that. How long does it does it last? Does it reset every year? Or you know, what happens if I'm starting to use Scribble in sixth grade and I'm a senior? Will it save everything for my entire high school career? Will it even go to college? I mean, if I'm going to the U then and I want to reference something I did as a junior, can I look at that, Bill? Or how does that Yeah, work? absolutely. So the transition to college gets a little bit trickier. And the reason why is because everything just stays inside of your account. So mm -hmm. if you have your account set up for like mine, for instance, my email address associated with account is just braxton at uen.org. So that account will last as long as I keep accessing it. It will just exist in perpetuity. The tricky thing is, is if I then go to, let's say the University of Utah, like you mentioned, and I have a new email address that I want to associate with my account, I'm going to have to start a new account and basically start over because, okay. and I don't know how it works in Canyon School District, but I'm guessing that after maybe a year or two, students' Canyon School District emails are essentially eliminated from your system. And when that happens, their Scribble accounts would also be eliminated from Scribble. So students are okay. going to be pretty set K-12. That's not going to be a big issue moving from one year to another. But that jump into college is where you might need to figure out how you're going to move resources from one account to another if that's something you want to do. I see. So let's say K-12 then, and I'm just going to kind of go into another thought, I guess, is a lot of times what we'll do when we're doing on-demand writing with our students, or really any genre of writing, is we'll like to look at a student sample and sometimes reverse engineer it, sort of pick it all mm -hmm. apart and say, okay, what what's going on here and there? So are they able to, I think you said this earlier, but just to confirm, are they able to say, take a take a student sample of writing, turn it into a PDF? upload to Scribble, and then they could all reverse engineer an actual student's piece of writing together. Exactly. And that's what I'd recommend. And I'd even recommend too, you can see that I have a couple of tabs right here, and these are what I call like my libraries. That's how Scribble labels them. And so okay. I would even just create a library for that and say student models for argumentative writing, student models for informative writing, whatever the case may be, and yes. add all of those PDFs in there. Because then even as a teacher, your account is going to exist in perpetuity as well. So over time, you're going to build up a bunch of models that you can work with with your students. So I love, I really love this. Here's my next question. How do, can teachers share with each other? So if I build a, I'm, I'm an eighth grade teacher at uh, Draper Park Middle, 
and I build all of these samples of student writing. Obviously, I'm taking the kid's name off of the samples. And and I'm a friend of mine over at say Midvale Middle is like, can I have access to those writing samples? I want to use them with my kids. How do they collaborate? Yeah, so there's a couple of ways to do this. The first one is back in the Scribble toolbar, I'm just going to highlight the collaborators feature one more time. So you could go in there, yeah. enter in that person's email address. That would give them access to that single model or that single text that they could look at. Um, yeah. But additionally, the same functionality exists within libraries as well. So within my library, I can also then go ahead and add collaborators to a library as well. So I'm nice. going to open up this library and you can see that I have a bunch more articles in here. But one of the things that I wanted to highlight is it also shows me like who added that thing to my library. And in this case, I'm the only one who's working in this one. So all of them just say me. But you would also be able to track who has contributed to a library if you're working with a pretty big group. Yeah. And then all you need to do is just go up to your three dots here and you're going to get essentially the same option where you have this collaborators tab, enter in people's email addresses who you want to add to the library, and then they'll be able to contribute to the library. They'll be able to see the things that are inside of the library and work with all of those sources. I really feel like this is going to be a game changer once we get people to start using it. It's going to be awesome. So. Yeah, absolutely. And your question also points to something that I've seen a couple of schools use where they'll actually sit down in their PLC meetings and they'll work from Scribble because they'll say, okay, this next week we're teaching X, Y, and Z. These are some of the texts that we want to use. We're going to put them in Scribble. And today during this meeting, what we're going to do is as a team, we're going to annotate these texts. And sometimes I've seen teams annotate the texts for different student ability levels, like I referenced before. And so sure. they'll say, okay, you two, you're going to put in annotations to support our ML students. You two over here are going to put in annotations to support some of our high achieving students, whatever the case may be. But I've right. also seen teams use it where they have one text and they're all on that same text together. And all they're doing is they're going through the text and identifying key parts of the text that they want to make sure they address with their students in class so that all of the teachers on that team are on the same page and hitting the same ideas. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice. So obviously I'm going to need to get in and play around with it. And I know we don't have enough time to like cover everything. It looks like there's a lot of stuff, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> um, but I guess my next question then would be, so I'm a brand new, I'm brand new to Scribble, which actually I am, but I'm already, you can see, I'm already starting to think of ways I want to start using it. What do you think would be the most common challenges teachers are going to face when, when they start to use it or when they start to implement it with their students? And what would you advise? I know you said earlier, sort of uh, baby steps. Um, what would your other advice be? for our teachers? Yeah, so in my role, when I was working in the classroom, I actually had a split role. So half the time I was a language arts teacher and half the time I was a technology coach for my building. And the reason I bring that up is because I helped a couple of teachers start using Scribble. They had heard about it, they were interested. And consistently the biggest barrier that I noticed for those teachers was simply making sure that they and their students had the Chrome extension that I mentioned before, because it is an extra step, right? Not only do you have to go to scribble.com, but the Chrome extension needs to be installed. Now that said, yeah. that only needs to happen once. So once it's installed, you're good to go, no big deal. But that was the biggest thing. And so if I was a brand new teacher, I wanted to use Scribble, I wanted my students to use Scribble. I know I mentioned this before, but I'd reach out to some sort of technology coach in your building or in your district to help you with mm -hmm. that extension process, or at least show you how it works. Because again, that kind of differs from district to district. And then after you've seen how that works, then honestly, it's pretty smooth sailing. And my first recommendation would be that you as the teacher start annotating some documents yourself so that you can see how the tool works, how those annotations are going to appear in your library, how your sources are going to play in your library. But the other thing that is maybe a next step is once you're comfortable with how the tool works and how to annotate things, you can also use what's called assignments in Scribble. And this is where I'd push teachers who had started using Scribble, we're now comfortable with Scribble, and we're ready to extend their practice. Yeah. And we can dive into this more if you want to, but kind of the short version of this 
is I can create an assignment in Scribble and I'm just going to open up a sample one. And again, it's what you might expect. So I'm going to title it. I'm going to write in my instructions. I'm going to set a due date, that sort of thing. But the, the yeah. powerful thing is that I can now monitor student progress on the assignment, and it gives me a breakdown of my students. So these are all just demo students that we've loaded into our account. But what was helpful to me as a teacher is I could go here, and it will tell me that Jack has curated nine sources for his research project. But then it will also show me what type of sources he's curated. Oh, so I'm going nice. to make the pie charts a little bit bigger. And I can hover over these and it will show me Jack has two government sources, one blog, two academic sources, so on and so forth. And it will right. give me a breakdown of what he cited as well. And so this is a really helpful way to get a quick high level overview of where my students are at in the writing process. And at UEN, we've had more schools and districts and teachers coming up to us more and more concerned about how do I make sure that my students are still writing and researching in the age of AI, right? How do I right. how do I transition from a product centered assignment to a process centered assignment? And I mm -hmm. think that Scribble is a really good tool for helping you make that transition to being more process oriented if that's a shift that you're looking to make. Yeah, that's awesome. What, so you mentioned AI and we know that there's some AI stuff on the horizon coming soon. Can you share any of that? Yeah, yeah. So I don't have many details yet because Scribble actually just released or announced, I guess, their AI features just last week. So the news is brand new. They haven't been implemented in Scribble quite yet, but what Scribble has developed is essentially a little chatbot called Reese. And the cool thing about Reese, I'm actually going to go back to my libraries. Again, I don't have Reese loaded, but in the demo, what Reese could do is Reese would appear right here. And again, it's just a simple AI chatbot. And I could ask Reese questions about the sources that are in my library. And so now the AI is only pulling information from my library sources. And if my library sources don't have information, Reese will pop up and say, your library doesn't include this information. It won't just make things up according to Scribble. So I'm excited to test that out. But the really powerful thing that came into play is that Reese will also cite where it's getting information from. So if mm -hmm. I asked it something like, how is artificial intelligence shaping education? It would spit out this little answer, but then give me an inline citation to one of these articles in my library. And then I could click on that inline citation and it would pull up a direct quote or passage within that article where it had pulled the information from. And the powerful thing about this is depending on your context and what you're trying to get students to practice. And of course, that's important to think about first, but it can really empower students in a way that they can find a lot of sources, but then essentially talk to the sources that they found mm -hmm. and be able to really, really quickly synthesize information from those sources. Nice. Yeah, that'll be good too. I, I'm sure that over time, especially K through 12, their libraries are going to start to look like my Google Drive looks. So to, have, <laughs> so to have some kind of AI where you could just like type in and it'll go find it or tell you where it is. So you don't have to Absolutely. spend 15 minutes digging for it will be really Absolutely. useful. <laughs> Absolutely. So, awesome. Well, well, thank you so much. What, what are, are any of your last thoughts then that maybe I haven't covered or that, that you'd want to share about using Scribble? Sure. I guess the last thing that I'd touch on is for me, I use Scribble in two ways. And I've kind of mentioned some of these ideas and alluded to others. But the first yeah. way is that it was a great tool for supporting students in their reading, because now I had a really clean, easy mechanism for pushing students into annotating texts. When I started teaching, we would use sticky notes and physical highlighters. And I still think that there's a place for that. And that's great for a lot of students. However, <laughs> when you have 180, 200 students, that can be messy for you to sort through as a grader and trying to hold yeah, students yeah. accountable and so on and so forth. So Scribble made annotation a lot easier for me to assess and a lot easier for me to monitor with my students, which then allowed me to do it more often and it became a little bit more powerful. So that's the first thing is I feel like it supported my students and their reading abilities. But the second thing is that I think that it also scaffolded the process 
or scaffolded the writing process for my students. Because as you can see in any given library, it's going to have a collection of sources, then it's going to give students their annotations, a bibliography, and it's going to just move them through this process that we try to teach them. I wouldn't yeah. always want that scaffolding process. So for some of my higher level courses that I taught, we might just work in Google Docs because I wanted to see what they can do and move through that process on their own. But as mm -hmm. I'm working with students who are maybe struggling or are maybe newer to the writing process, having this step-by-step -step guide that Scribble kind of guides them through became really, really helpful for me in scaffolding the writing process for them. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Braxton. Appreciate your yeah. time today. My email yes. address again is just Braxton, B-R-A-X-T-O-N at U-E-N dot org. And again, my name is Braxton Thornley. And one of the best parts of my job is being able to talk to teachers about the things that are happening in their classrooms. That's one thing that I really, really enjoy. So I promise any teachers listening right now, if you reach out, you are not bothering me. You're giving me kind of the best part of my week. So feel free to right. reach out. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you.